Hey, what's up, Zach here. And these are my top five favorite basketball shoes for the 2023-2024 NBA season. And as a heads up, if you're looking to buy any of these shoes on this list, I will leave links in the description below. All right, here we go. And starting off at number five, this shoe kind of carries over from last year's top five, with just some very subtle tweaks to this shoe, which I think made huge differences. And that is the Nike LeBron 21. And those of you that watch this channel for any length of time know that the LeBron 20s really grew on me over the last year. And the LeBron 21s, to me, really took the best aspects of the 20s, as well as the next gens, put them into one shoe, created a shoe with just a little bit better lockdown in the 20s, but also that really nimble, quick footwork, really great indoor grip, and just honestly a fun shoe to play in, and really a fun shoe to play in no matter if you're a really shifty guard all the way up to a larger center. I think these things do very well. So really no matter what position you're playing in, if you want a nice bouncy shoe, but also a shoe that, that's not super maxless, but has the containment of those shoes, but that can still, you know, get very shifty when you want to, the 21s are an awesome pickup. And going from the number five shoe in the LeBron 21, which you know I feel like everybody has heard of, the number four shoe on this list really I think was kind of a sleeper this year, especially in going into this season. I think it's gonna get more and more popular as more and more people try them. And that is the Rigorer AR1. And the interesting thing about the Rigorer AR1, it's you know, Austin Reeves and LeBron play on the same team, but what's funny is, is the AR1 kind of like the LeBron 21 in just about every way, except the grip is just a little bit better, the containment is, is right on par, the playability and just the bounce of them are, are just a little bit superior to the 21, at least in my opinion. It's, it's basically a, a very similar shoe, except in a little bit of a lighter package, but with all the trappings of the 21. So like I said, any position that you have on court, these will really have you covered. I was just really blown away by the grip and the stopping power of these. Yeah, they got off the blocks very well, but when you're trying to go side to side and cut very hard, you would think, you know, these shoes would kind of buckle over just given their weight and just profile, but the way the uppers are constructed, the way that the midsole shape is, they just hold their ground incredibly well, especially compared to shoes that are way heavier than them and it's way more max, must have way more trapping. So in terms of a shoe that really kind of does everything well, but in that lighter package, I think these are, like I said, I think these are gonna sell very well this year. And I think as the more people that try them and the more the, you know, the word spreads about them, I think that's when these are really gonna start to, you know, you start to see them in gyms more and more and more. And coming in at number three is a shoe that I think makes the top five list in everything I do from basketball to pickleball and everything. And that is the Way of Wade Fission 8. And I guess by extension, the Way of Wade 10. But the reason I single out the Fission 8 over the 10 is that I think the Fission 8 just has a little bit better breathability. It's outdoor play plays a little bit better than the 10s, but it has that same silhouette, that same shape, really rugged play. So just a little bit more nimble than the 10s. If you want more containment, more maximalism, yeah go with the 10s. Like I said, my review of them, I, to me, these are the best way of wade shoe out there, especially with the lateral flange on these, the serrated flange. I don't think you get better design choice in this. Plus the shank set up in this. It really is everything in these is just set up for success, to be honest. So right now, if it's way of wade and someone's saying, you know, what do you think is the best way of wade shoe right now? And obviously one of the best ones on the market right now, just in terms of overall shoe, Vision 8. And if you do want a side-by-side -side comparison table of any of these shoes for any of their stats, like heel height, heel toe drop, universal rating system, whatever, I do have that as a digital download in the description that is going to be changing to an interactive sheet pretty soon. I am working out all the kinks on that. That should be done pretty soon here, just whenever I'm able to kind of make sure that it's, it's as user-friendly as the one that I have now, but that'll be able to be sorted by really any stat you want that I do on this channel, it'll be there for you in updating in real time, not just like every week to two weeks like it is now. So if you do wanna check that out, that is in the link in the description below. If you've already bought the list, you will get that free upgrade coming along with it. And coming at number two is a shoe that I, I still think is the most well-engineered shoe on the market right now, the most innovative shoe on the market right now, and that is the Adidas Harden Volume 7. And if you remember from my last top five list, this was the number one shoe on the market. And like I said, I think for a lot of people, it probably still is the number one shoe on the market, it, just because you know Adidas was really one of the only companies that have found a way to make a slipper tongue shoe play like a three-piece tongue. 
So look at that real intimate fit around your ankle. And, you know, the football pads on both sides of the shoe that give you such great containment and just the shape of the shoe, the shape of the midsole and the engineering of the outsole tread give it such nimble play for such a more maximalist shoe. Just if you want a maximalist shoe right now, I don't really see how it gets much better than this right now, especially just with all the, the tools that it has to offer you. I know when you pick them up or you look at them, sometimes they might feel like they're a little bit clunky, a little bit big, but once you put them on, pretty much everyone that puts them on their feet will say, you know, it just blows them away with how it feels underfoot. So I still think best engineering, best innovation for sure. This is the number one shoe. It's just combining that plus performance, comfort things. Uh, the number one shoe just has these beat by a little bit. Before I get to the number one shoe, I do want to make two honorable mentions, mainly for most improved. Number one is the Jordan 38 Quantum Leap over the Jordan 37s, especially just in terms of raw playability and containment, especially that shank in the forefoot. I know it's a little different, not everybody likes it, but I think people that play up on the balls their foot a lot, it just is really strategic placement, and just really innovative. The next one though is the Curry Flow 11. I've always had a lot of issues with the Curry line, just here and there. They have great concepts, but just sometimes the execution isn't the best, like not to get it into the top five, so it could choose. The Curry Flow 11 though, has fixed almost every issue. Specifically from the nines and the tens, the grip is out of this world and the containment, it finally matches the performance. The only thing that does not get them into the top five is that they don't accept an orthotic as well as some of these other shoes, as well as uh, some people that have issues with sliding forward in their shoe will need to augment. But other than that, that's it. And coming in at number one is a shoe that has really taken you know design and performance inspiration, not only from basketball, but from tennis and pickleball as well, combined it into just the ultimate ultimate court shoe pretty much in general, and that is the New Balance Two-Way Volume 4. One of the biggest reasons I like the Two-Way Volume 4 so much is just its simplicity. It is really a no-nonsense shoe, both in its design and its performance, right? It, it's got the containment of just about any other shoe on the market, and it's more nimble than just about every other shoe on the market. It feels more rugged underfoot than any other shoe on the market, and it feels more resilient. But when you look at it, it looks like a pretty simple package, and it just shows you you don't need a ton of bells and whistles on the shoe to engineer something just about anybody can find elite performance in. And I just think that that's a real blueprint for shoes in the future too, that if you get the design right, it doesn't need to be embellished. That's not saying that bells and whistles aren't great. I love looking at bells and whistles on shoe. It's one of my favorite things. I don't think I'd have a channel if I wasn't looking at bells and whistles on shoes, but it is nice every once in a while to see a shoe come out. It is just no frills, all design, all performance, just the best quality materials that that company can make put in a very simple package that performs very well. You know, most of the time, the simpler design, you know, like I said, will, will be superior because there's just less to go wrong with it, right? So if you're looking for an incredibly well-balanced experience on foot, really rugged experience, but nimble and fast, I really think this is the best shoe on the market right now. And, you know, and honestly, it was tough, right? Getting past shoes like the Fission 8, the Wave Way 10, the Harden Volume 7, it was gonna take a really incredible shoe to get through there. And lo and behold, it took a more meat and potato shoe to you know, cut through all those other shoes. It, kind of ironic, you know, <laughs> that's a shoe like this, at least in my opinion, really just blew past all the other shoes. But at the same time, like I said, a lot of times it's the simpler design that gets the job done you know, more efficiently and easier for the, the largest amount of people. But of course, I'd love to know what your top five shoes are right now. You know, I know there's a ton of great shoes that come out this year. This has been an incredibly hard list to put together because I said most shoes that are coming out right now are pretty darn good. Now remember, I do have the ultimate basketball shoe buyer's guide videos, and those are the best shoes for a foot type game style injury or chronic condition you might have. That does get updated about every four to five months, so I will leave the most recent video in the description below as well as up here. So make sure if you wanna check that out, click this video up above and make sure you subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam, and I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.